Today is the day where we reflect on the life and legacy of Dr. Martin mm -hmm. Luther King Jr., whose push for nonviolent social justice for all was at the forefront of the civil rights movement. Celebrity historian Rafi Andonian is here to talk about how history was being made in our state mm -hmm. during this time. Thanks for being here again, Rafi. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me on the important day. Very important. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Let's talk about what was going on during this period of time and why Arkansas is kind of making history around this time. What's going on, and there's always a context to what's going on, right? So you have Edith May Irby, Irby who's the first person to go to an all-white medical school in the South, first black person to mm -hmm. go through it. So he, she helped desegregate the wow. entire medical schools in the South. And okay. what's going on in bigger picture in education in the South is the NAACP has, is doing a campaign in the 30s and 40s that eventually leads to the Brown versus Board of Education, which mm -hmm. you see the commemorative coin here made by United States Mint. It's a bronze medal oh, for sure. Brown versus Board of Education, which of course overturned segregation in education. But there were a series of cases that were taking place by the NAACP in graduate schools, like medical school, business school, law mm -hmm. school, to try to chip away at the separate but equal doctrine that was in place by showing that these graduate schools were either unavailable for black folks or were not really equal if they were available. So that's the context that this stuff takes place in, eventually leading to Brown versus Board. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, we're talking about uh, University of Arkansas uh, Medical School down in Little Rock. So it's nice to see like how our state is uh, a part of all these, these historic moments. A lot of people think about Arkansas and they think about the Little Rock Nine. Little Nine, yeah. Uh, but also there's some other historic events happening, and we're talking about one of those right and now. And this is very different than Little Rock Nine in one very important way. This is no court order. There is no conflict. Okay. And that's the first one in the entire South at any instant, any school to have no court order. You did have a segregationist governor in at the time. However, the segregationist governor did not actually resist. He just kind of looked the other way and let it happen. Now, there were at the University of Arkansas, the chair of the board and the president of the university who were behind the scenes working it to gain support to let in Edith May Irby because she was so qualified. There are well over 200 applicants to the uh, medical school for Arkansas. The top 90 were supposed to be taken. She ranked in the 20s. Wow. So when they were already considering maybe we, you know, t taking away this policy, this was a great opportunity because she ranked so well. And they had seen legal challenges in states around them. In Missouri, there was a yeah. challenge, a law school that went all the way to Supreme Court. In Oklahoma, there was a challenge that went all the way to Supreme Court. So they're watching this and they're like, do we really want to fight a legal battle mm -hmm. and spend all that money when these kinds of things are happening right next door? So that sets the stage for here in Arkansas as well. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. You're talking about legacy as well. I'm curious about how did Edith May Irby's trailblazing have a lasting impact? Mm. So remember, she's the first black medical student in the South, right, for, from all white medical school. Well, when she does that, there's a lot of pride in the black community. So in black churches or even the housekeeping at university, they start to give little bits of money to help her to get through school. Okay. You know one of the people that she spoke to that was in the crowd? Who? Dr. Jocelyn Elders. She became the second black female student at University of Arkansas Medical School. Wow. Later, decades later in the 1990s, of course, became the first female uh, 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 Surgeon General in the United States all started from right here in Arkansas because of what Edith May Irby did. That gives me chills just thinking about that. Pretty that tremendous to think about that, right? Now, she went on to do other trailblazing, lots of different places. She went to Texas in the position. She actually encountered more racism in Texas, and she complained about that. But eventually, she also became the president of the National Medical Association. Wow. So she was a trailblazer all over the place oh, and yeah. indirectly had that national impact to Dr. Jocelyn Elders. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. That's awesome. Rafi, you're always so full of knowledge. <laughs> we appreciate it. It's like any subject we need a little bit of history on. This, you is, got it. this is the person. Yeah, yes. you got it. And I love how you're tying it back to um, our state, especially on a day like today where we're celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Rafi, yes. thank you so much. Thanks, we appreciate man. it. Thank you. Really yeah, important stuff. Yes. <laughs>